What's up guys, my name is Cliff with the Creator's Cup and you are watching this video because you probably own the DJI FPV drone and maybe you wanna mount a GoPro to it. You're not watching this video likely because, well, this little thing right here, you've seen happen before. You've seen people mount this. Matty Hapoy has done it, several other people have done it and they do it for a good reason. The footage is amazing, it's awesome. What we're gonna go over today is not just that, but something else and we are in detail at the end of the video going to go over how to actually install this, you know, the way we would. Caution, this will probably void your warranty. And if it crashes, it's probably going to be your fault, even if you do have care refresh. So keep that in mind. This is risky. And even more risky than that is our other plan. On the back of this guy, we've actually zip tied, if you can see that, another random GoPro mount. So we're going to try to take the GoPro from the top center and move it to the back for a rear camera view. Yeah, we're gonna clear. So we're gonna try to make it so when we fly, we can get those reveal shots that are so crazy. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, it's a lot of weight on the back of this drone. It probably isn't gonna work very well. And to that I'll say, you're probably right, but we're gonna try it anyway. So yeah, let's see if we can do this. Ah, something I saw right away that's a problem. This is going to hit the blades right here, we're going to actually have issues. That's that's not okay. So we need to shorten this screw. We could use this one and well, we'll modify it a little bit. So yeah, this thing's a lot of fun. I love the DJI FPV drone. The camera is not too bad, but it's not exactly the best quality. Um, it's really good for like, you know, just YouTube videos, just having a little fun, but trying to get some like footage you're really proud of that you wanna keep for a long time or something for a client, it's definitely not quite there yet. Like they're really, really close, but it needs better stabilization. And that's where GoPro and Real Steady come in. I'll leave a link for that stuff down below. When you add the GoPro to the top of it, for somebody like me that's not an experienced FPV pilot, but has flown the GPS drone for a very long time, it's a great way to get into it. It's a little more expensive, but it's one of those things that I wouldn't have made the leap without this drone. It probably would have taken me, I don't know, a couple more years before I would have bought an FPV drone. And I probably would have crashed it really fast and maybe gave up. So all you FPV guys out there that are true FPV guys, Good for you, because it is not easy to fly in manual, and I couldn't imagine just starting out in full manual. So let's go ahead and shorten this screw. Safety first. Here we go. Oh, I bet that's hot. That's hot. That's really hot. Okay, let's put this on the back. Ordinarily, I would test this stuff before I showed you guys, but I thought there might be a good chance that this ends badly. And if it does, well, I figured I'd show you how I did it before I don't have anything to show you guys. Hey, I think we're onto something. <laughs> oh, that is bad news right there. Everything looks backwards now. So this, wait, this is the front of the drone and this is the back, so. Let's go test this out. Oh, and before we go, one other thing I want to point out. I use Kronos ND filters. Um, they come in a pack of three. They have their own individual clamps. Now this is for the GoPro Hero 8 Black. I use these because there's no magnetic lens that falls off. So they individually snap on there and they stay on there really nice and tight. So Kronos, I'll leave a link below for those two. I don't think I'll get commissioned, but check them out anyway. So yeah, let's go see if this thing flies or if we're gonna crash it. Wish me luck. One last thing I want to point out real quick. This is a really, really bad idea. Like, it's just a terrible idea. You are going to void your warranty. You will probably crash. It will probably be very expensive. So please, please don't come back to me if you crash. It's not my fault. You listen to me and you guys, if you follow me, know that sometimes I do things that aren't very bright. So yeah. But to me, I think it's worth no, it. And no, it's, wait, it's absolutely not worth, yeah, it's it. worth it. Don't what, do it. What, what, what I promise happened? you, it's a terrible idea. I mean, I can change the future now that you You can't change me. the future. Well, the past, my past. You know what would happen if you did that? Yeah, it's just a drone, see dude. What happens. What, seriously, what, what are you doing?
believe uh, that actually worked on the back. It didn't want to like, when you were going forward, we had a lot of issues in high wind and normal mode. It didn't really want to go forward very fast. So I had to put it in sport, but other than that, did a really good job. Um, that's crazy. I don't recommend it, but you should try it. So that was a complete and total success. I was not expecting that thing to fly that well. I don't know what you could tell from the video, but on takeoff, it lifted straight up. It didn't rock hardly at all. I didn't really have any issues. Um, going forward in reverse seemed to be good. It was really stable. The only issue I had while flying it was when I was coming back and the wind was picking up. It was probably 30 mile an hour winds today, which is bad enough without all this. And when I try to go forward in normal mode to bring it back to land, because I'm not a proper FPV pilot, it didn't really seem to have the power. I think it was kind of auto-correcting because of the weight. So I had to put it in sport mode to get it to go forward. And then that was fine. And that's in a 30 mile an hour headwind. So you really shouldn't be flying like that or like this. Anyway, so yeah, um, it did a great job. The footage was pretty cool. I'm sure we're gonna take our time and get some more creative videos with this and actually try to get some clips that are just pretty epic. And I'd love to see what you guys do if you're dumb enough to actually do this yourself. You shouldn't, you really should actually. But yeah, um, I'd love to see some of that. If you wanna tag us on Instagram, we're at the Creators Cup. And yes, this is a shameless plug. So go ahead and tag us on there. If you guys make any videos, I would just like to see it. Anyway, let's go ahead and go over the build and how we actually did this. I'm not gonna tear this top part apart. This is kind of the main thing I wanna show you guys. This back is honestly just some zip ties on a little GoPro mount that's not very permanent or professional, but this is more of a proof of concept. So the top I do wanna show you, obviously we built this before this video. So I'm gonna show you some photos and then just kind of give you some ideas of how we actually did it as I explain this because I don't wanna tear it apart, that's no fun. So here we go. This drone fortunately comes with two shells. It's almost like they planned on us doing something to one of the shells, which I think is odd. So it comes with two different shells in the FPV combo, which is the regular combo. And all we did, and if you look at this photo, is drill three holes in the top between the actual components and like the computer parts inside of here. So that looks like there's a chip in there. And then I think that's, that's a fan or a speaker, honestly, not real sure, but whatever that is right there, we put the screws in between there. We did the screws and then we did this 3M adhesive, not really to stick it on there any, but this adhesive is more for the purpose of just kind of stabilizing this. So that if those screws get a little loose, it doesn't wobble or anything like that. It's kind of a second safety measure. I would not, however, just stick it on there. Yes, you can get some things, I think on Etsy that actually screw onto the sides. That's probably the better option, but I'm way too impatient to wait for things to come in the mail. So I just chose to drill holes in my drone. Also, if you use the Etsy ones, you probably won't void your warranty. Should have thought of that. Anyway, so that's how we did this. This is the piece we use, the actual GoPro mount. And if you take this, Take these three screws off, you end up with this piece. Now, I don't know if you can see that on this camera. So this is what you end up with. It has these three screw holes. And with these three screw holes, you can attach to the top of this guy. We chose to angle it forward, not backwards, because this gives it a better point of view so you actually miss the propellers when you're filming. You can get a pretty good angle if you try to do it that way. I better use it. <laughs> actual screwdriver on this so I don't break my mount. So the angle you can get on the back without any issue at all is actually pretty steep. It's not too bad, like it hits right there, but you can get down to this low, which is basically nothing in view at that point. On the front, when you're filming, the props, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera or not. Let's get to where not blinding light. The props don't come into view till you're leaning pretty far forward. So it's to the point, I'll show you from the side, that you're at about this angle. And when you actually take the drone and you have the drone flying, you just be looking at the dirt anyway, so it really doesn't make any difference. 
So yeah, overall, this works really well. This is also centered and balanced, unlike this, which I cannot believe actually worked, is a lot of weight in the back. The other cool thing you could do with this, especially if you didn't have this ugly mount on the front, is put this on the back of the drone. I'll go ahead and just record this to show you. And then if you do it like this, you could actually have kind of a POV of the back of the drone and get some pretty cool footage. So I'm sure if you subscribe and follow our channel in future videos, another shameless plug, you'll get to see some clips where we do it this way, where it's more of like a POV of the back of the drone. So that should be interesting. Last little tip, make sure you hit record. You definitely need to hit record. If you're using Real Steady, remember to turn all the built-in stabilization off. If you turn any of that on, you will not be able to use Real Steady and you'll be really disappointed. Real Steady is like $99. I'll leave a link below for it, as well as the Freewell ND filters for the drone itself, which I don't use that much now that I do most of my filming on the GoPro, and these Kronos ND filters for the GoPro Hero 8 Black. This won't work for the 9, so if you are like me and buy last year's model because it's cheaper, these are fantastic for FPV drones. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the next one. I almost forgot the most important part of this video. This video is about a DJI FPV drone. I can't do this video without doing this. Yeah.